Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Heavy engineering company Efficient Engineering has delivered 15 radio antennas which are being used for the Meerkat Radio Telescope project, the first phase of the Square Kilometre Array project in Northern Cape. David Oliveira tells us more. Efficient Engineering Division, Efficient Power MD Warwick Jackson, highlights that the next milestone for Efficient Engineering will be the delivery of an additional 17 integrated pedestal and yoke units by the end of April. Final delivery of all 64 units is scheduled for December 2016. He highlights that, owing to the complexity of the project and the accuracy required by radio antenna systems, the engineering of the antenna position has required significant levels of manufacturing accuracy and repeatability, particularly the slew bearing, which connects the stationary pedestal with the rotating yoke that holds the antenna backup structure. That slew bearing, also locally manufactured at uh, TSR, um, has got to have extreme levels of accuracy and repeatability. Part of the integration process that we are involved with uh, is to verify that the encoder shaft um, is installed correctly and is in the same perpendicular plane as the slew bearing and the mounting plate for that particular encoder needs to be within 50 microns in all three axes. Um, this is essential for that encoder to give the level of accuracy that's required uh, for a radio telescope like this. Another important requirement for the radio antenna is the prevention of unwanted electromagnetic interference, which can interfere with the specialized signal receiver equipment. Jackson notes that there are extremely specialized requirements around the fabrication of the shielded drive compartment to ensure minimal electromagnetic interference, as it houses a unique servo system designed by Germany-based satellite antenna specialist and Meerkat designer, Vertex Antenna and Technique. One of the absolute key aspects of uh, a radio telescope is only to pick up the electromagnetic waves that you're interested in. Um, and these are generally very low powered uh, electromagnetic signals and any of our noisy commercial day-to-day uh, -day electronics create a massive amount of noise. Uh, the site itself was selected largely because of its um, ideal location and remoteness. Um, it is a radio silent area. The unit itself requires high levels of screening, electromagnetic screening. Um, all of the welding is done and checked, part of that testing is carried out here uh, and more importantly every single weld around that structure is fully examined in a non-destructive test uh, to establish that there are no cracks um, as cracks, not from a strength perspective, but cracks would magnify that electromagnetic interference. In fact if you went to an operational unit with a cell phone in your pocket you would destroy the amplifier. Every aspect of the system is tested for faults at efficient engineering facilities by the company as well as by independent testing companies before the completed radio antennas are transported by road to the SKA site. Meanwhile, Jackson asserts that the Meerkat project is demonstrating South African companies' ability to handle global projects and deliver quality engineered solutions. It demonstrates perfectly that A, South Africa and South Africans are fully capable of taking on world projects. I mean, this is a true world project. It, it uh, is run by uh, General Dynamics, uh, an American company. Um, the design is German, uh, Vertex Antennas. Uh, it is all put together by a, a very competent local outfit, uh, Stratasat, um, and it shows that collaboration between all of these partners has resolve, resulted in an incredible project which is uh, running on schedule uh, and exceeding expectations of a number of people involved. So I think it really does say what an important player South Africa can be and that we can take on uh, bigger and bigger portions of work and we really I think have surprised everyone involved uh, uh, across various continents that essentially a, an engineering shop in South Africa, along with other key suppliers, and I think that's very important to bring in, that there are key players that make this possible when you work in a collaborative en environment. So from our perspective we have never professed to be experts in, in everything and you, you partner with people you know are the best at what they do. And I think uh, if you look around South Africa, there are a lot more of those people than we realize or give ourselves credit for. Uh, it's a truly an, an environment where we are, are, are setting a benchmark in how to make mass-produced um, radio antennas. 
Um, so as a South African myself, I'm very proud to be involved with it. And I think that um, we need to be, as a nation, embrace these sorts of projects because we are capable. Other news making headlines this week, Arriva and Rosatom on nuclear costs, secrecy and the South African tender. Nuclear vendor Arriva, which is planning to participate in a French industry bid for South Africa's proposed nuclear bill program, indicated that in the absence of an actual tender, it was not possible to offer any certainty as to the likely cost of the program. We have to go to the process, and as it has been told, nobody knows the price of a nuclear plant except the people there, okay? Nobody else. But we know the price of a nuclear plant only when we will have the document telling what is requesting, which risk will be bear by the vendors and which one will be taken by the government or the utility. Until this time, you cannot give a price. That's Krimo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.